Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. Today we're going to do a review of an Intel motherboard. So it's the Meg Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Alright, we're going to have a look at it, go over all its features. It's pretty much loaded. And yeah, I'm not because it's the money it costs. Uh, not in my pocket no more. Alright, the motherboards have gotten out of control. The pricing, like everything else, has gone way up. And truthfully, not worth it. Although, it's a great motherboard. You can see for yourself what it's all about. Uh, for me, it's worth it just because when I do my builds, I want to make sure I have the best I can get unless I'm doing a lower end build. This time, I want to do a higher end build. I'm still staying probably with the 13th generation because the difference between the 13 and 14 isn't that much. So, let's go on. Let's have a look at the motherboard. See what it's all about, and we'll go from there. Let's get started. Okay, so this is a quick look at the outside of the box. Okay, it says next gen CPU ready, which means the uh, 13th gen. All right, Windows 11 compatible. They put TPM 2.0 just to let you know that it does have that module on the motherboard, so you don't have to worry about it. So if you want to do the uh, security for your secure boot and all that kind of stuff, so you can run your games or whatever run UEFI, all that kind of good stuff, it's there for you. Lightning Gen 5, and of course it has the MSI MAG logo, and it will accommodate both, I believe, 12th and 13th Gen, so if you want to go down to the 12th, I don't know why you would, if you're going to get a motherboard like this, you're probably going to want to stick with the 13th Gen. Alright, I like using MSI motherboards, I just find everything works better. I've never had an issue with an MSI motherboard to date. Especially when it comes to RGB software. If you like that, this is my recommendation is stick with MSI. So let's get it out of the box. Let's have a look at it. And uh, let's go over all its features. Alright, now it's already been opened out of the box once because they had to double check the pins. I'll show you what that's all about if you don't know already. Because they have to check that the CPU socket is going to be okay. Alright, you don't have any bent pins or anything like that. So we're going to set the motherboard aside for now before we start just to see what else we get in the package. Which is not a lot these days to be quite honest with you. I'm finding they're really uh, charging a whole lot more and giving a whole lot less. So of course we have our antenna for our Wi-Fi. We have a couple of SATA cables which with M.2 you may not use anymore. And they give you a whole bunch of different stickers. Kind of cool. I like some of these. Um, these can be helpful for identifying some of your fans and RGBs, all that kind of good stuff. Gives you a little uh, European Union regulatory notices, all that kind of stuff. Gives you a quick installation guide. You have your M.2 screw. All right. Now this is the um, one when you put it in so it's easier to secure it without a whole lot of work. Okay, of course it has, if you want to give them a shout out, how to enter, and all this kind of stuff, and they give you prizes or whatever they're going to offer. And we have here, I have no idea what that is. Looks like, oh, oh, is this a first? I think this is all your drivers on a USB. That might be a first. In fact, I know it's a first if that's what it is. Let's have a look. So that's exactly what it is. A little MSI branded USB Okay, it's got the little thing on here, but it's a USB stick with all your drivers, everything you're going to need. That's the first time I've had a motherboard that has done that. Kudos to MSI for finally doing that. I haven't seen any other motherboard do it yet. They give you a second. Uh, it's called an M.2 locker, just in case you're wondering. All right, again, makes it easier to install your M.2s lock them down, take them back out, exchange them, whatever you want to do. Let's close the box. Let's get on to the actual motherboard. Okay, so first we're going to start off with some of the features that I think are important on the board. So you have your four DIMM slots, which are DDR5 up to 7200 overclocked. Okay, that's pretty fast. Uh, you're not getting that out of uh, a DDR4. Now, I just happen to have DDR5, which is what made this not quite so bad in price. 
Uh, of course, it has four M.2 Gen 4 times four 64 gigabyte a second slots and seven times uh, SATA six gigabyte per second ports. So underneath here, I've just loosened it to show you. So underneath here, you've got two M.2 slots right there, all right, which I think is pretty darn cool. Of course, underneath here, peel this off when you're going to use them to uh, help keep the temperatures down. You have another one here and another one here. Now, this one is Lightning Gen 5 up to 128 gigabyte a second bandwidth and compatible also with backward compatible with PCIe 4.0. All right, just something that you want to make sure you have. Of course, the DIMMs are giving you higher data transfer. And of course, you have your socket compatible with 12th and 13th gen. Uh, I've already lifted it up to see uh, everything is okay. Now, I want to focus in on something here so you can see it better. So, looking right down here in the back and up along here, okay, you have a 16 plus one plus one dual, I can't pronounce it, DUET, D -U -E -T, so DUET rail power system. I don't know why they pronounce it like that or how they say it like that, but anyway, that's going to give you more power, help you to give you maximum performance and aggressive VRAM design, okay, that's built with digital CPU power system. Okay, it combines an eight and eight pin power connectors and exclusive core boost technology. All right, the mag series motherboards are ready for heavy gaming loads. All right, just something to keep in mind. So let's focus back out here. We'll show you a couple more things. So we're going to start with the back of the motherboard, this side here. Of course, you have system fan. You have your ATX power for 24 pin power. You have USB 3.0. Your USB, and so it's type C. So the actual specifications for that are USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2, 20 gigabyte per second. Okay, one type C, of course. Then you have a six uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2, 100 gigabyte a second. And you have four more um, type A. All right, we'll show you that on the back. Here's your six SATA that I pointed out earlier. USB-C 3.0. You have a second USB 3.0. So if you happen to buy a motherboard and for whatever reason you need another USB-C, you can buy an adapter that I've done a video on, uh, connect it to this, and then you'll have two of them. So for those that need that, it's there. Okay, moving on to this side of the motherboard. You can see right here you have your front panel connectors. So JFP1. You have another SATA one. System fan, so for five on here, USB, second USB, which a lot of motherboards are not giving you enough USBs nowadays, so it's good to see a couple of them on there. You have three more fan headers here, system fans. You have your, this is basically your, two, your TPM module, all right, right here. Your J Power LED one, your addressable RGB, another RGB, and your audio. So I think having all this on one side, with your two M.2s, and of course two more, you've got lots of storage. You're not going to be lacking for it on this motherboard. But that's why you pay so much for it. But mind you, the $402 that I paid, that includes three years of warranty. I buy that because I tend to sell my systems, and I want to be able to protect the person that's buying the system from me, so anything goes wrong with the motherboard, they're protected. So that adds another, I think, like 50 bucks to it. So when you're buying a motherboard like this, some of the extra features you're going to get that you don't always see on a lot of motherboards is you have a clear CMOS button right here. All right, so if you're having any kind of problems with it, push that button, it's going to help you take care of it. Know how it works before you go messing with it. You want to flash your BIOS? You have a little button here. So you put your USB stick in, push this. It's going to start it up. You'll know, be able to go. Of course, then you have your HDMI and your display port. Okay? You have ample USB. As a matter of fact, you have these two right here, which are USB 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigabyte a second type A. All right? Moving over to this one. So starting from the top, you have the same ones. But the ones on the bottom that are in red are USB 3.0 Gen 2, 10 gigabyte a second. All right, your flash BIOS port is right here. 
All right, you can see how it's circled with a little kind of silvery going around. You have two USB um, C's, so 3.2 Gen 2 times 2, 20 gigabyte a second, 2.5 gigabyte per second LAN, and of course, then you have your Wi Fi, and then you have your um, CS out, RS out, your line in, line out, mic in, and your Swift out. So that covers everything on the back of your motherboard. Of course, you have your uh, audio uh, capacitors on this side. All right, I just move that so you can see them better. All right, and you have another we'll just have a system fan right here. So you're not lacking for anything on this motherboard. This motherboard is going to do everything you need. And for the price, it ought to. Okay, so moving on to this side, of course, you have a big heat sink. All right. And you have this, which is your back plate for um, your motherboard. So when you're putting it in the case, you're not looking for an I.O. shield. It's built on. You have two power connectors because you want to be able to overclock uh, on this motherboard for gaming. Uh, you don't have to, but it's there. So you have two 8 pins for power. CPU 1, CPU 2. Don't see that on every motherboard. But again, like I say, with the price, you have better on this one. Okay, moving over to the right hand side, all right, we have another system fan, two, two here. So one is your CPU, one is your pump, you have addressable RGB and RGB, all right, and another system fan down here, which I already pointed out earlier. Just to be, sh be clear, this is your CPU fan that's going to plug in right here, and this is for your pump, but it can also be used as just another uh, fan header, all right, and of course you have one on the side like I mentioned. And one thing I want to make sure I point out, of course, you have your steel reinforced slot for your graphics. That's where your GPU is going to go. And you have a second one over here. Not the same speed, I might add. All right, so just keep that in mind. Um, these days, most people are only going to run one graphics card. If you're running two, let me know in the comments. I would be interested to know. And tell me why. Why are you running two? And of course, your CMOS battery is right here. And you have a one PCIe slot times one right there. Uh, pretty much covers everything on the board. And just in case you're wondering what's on the back, here's the back of your motherboard. All right. You can see where your traces are for your audio. All right. Just uh, to make sure you're aware of where it is. Of course, it's an ATX motherboard. Has nine standoffs. Hey, there's three, three, and three. So something else that'll be interesting to know is MSI did it right. Every M.2 on here, except of course this one, uh, supports PCIe 4.0. Well, of course this does too, but it's uh, PCIe 5.0. But you have four and they will all run at the same time. You're not for a lack of PCIe lanes. All right, just something to be aware of. I know a lot of people say, well, yeah, but if I do this, it's going to take up, and it's going to eat them up, and then I'm not going to be able to run them all. On this motherboard, you can. So a few more features I want to point out is, of course, it supports Bluetooth 5.3, FIPS, FISMA, Wi-Fi 6E, so 6 gigabytes per, or 6 gigahertz. Uh, of course, that'll depend on your country's regulations and, and your uh, Windows. Uh, it's going to be Windows 11 and you have to have Windows 10. Uh, the build has to be 21H1 or later. Your Realtek, so your audio, is an ALC 4080 codec, 7.1 channel USB high performance audio, and uh, just pretty damn good. Um, the two power connectors I showed you earlier, okay, so I'm just going to show you those again just to point it out. All right, so you have your CPU power connector and you have your ETX power connector all right so they both say CPU power 1 and 2 they have in the specs in the manual which you can download uh, you'll have, they have a QR code on the box you'll see that one is power connector ATX power and the second one is power connector CPU power so a few more things I want to go over of course is it has a robust power design which is your 16 phases mirror powered arrangement okay with the use of 90 amp Power smart stage, okay? You had quadruple or so four M.2 connectors with the M.2 shield frozer, 
All right, your Lightning 20 gigabyte, uh, 3.2 USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2, 20 gigabyte a second, which I pointed out on the back there. Your Wi-Fi 6E with your Bluetooth, which 5.3 is pretty new, so it's good to see that's coming out. Audio Boost 5, up to 120 uh, decibels, or 32-bit, 384 kilohertz, and DSD support. And that pretty much uh, covers pretty much everything I can think of. I don't think I've left anything out other than, of course, that it supports 4K at 60 hertz, has HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4, of course, with the required uh, processor graphics. All right, so your graphics card, most graphics cards are going to have that, of course. Has eight channels, 7.1 HD audio with audio boost, like I mentioned. Um, yeah, I don't think I've mentioned or forgot anything. Of course, on the box has a little QR code. You can go in there, register, and uh, maybe get some goodies. But at least you'll be able to see more information. Uh, of course, get your usual, your get your user manual. I'll get that right yet. And uh, yeah, that's it. All there is to it. All right, so that covers pretty much everything on the motherboard. Nothing fancy about motherboards these days. It's nice to see they've got a couple extra things on there. Uh, that you didn't see on previous motherboards and uh, having all the support for PCIe 4.0 and of course 5.0 which is always good to see uh, although they're very expensive so I don't know how many of you out there are using it if you're using a PCIe 5.0 M.2 drive leave it in the comments let me know which one you're using which one you think is best and uh, yeah maybe I'll check it out and if you have any comments of course leave them down below uh, and let me know what you think so if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, think about subscribing. Hit that notification, uh, that little bell symbol there uh, for videos so you can see them as they're coming up. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good one.